they definitely took time away from me and my daughter, which I'm never going to get back. They missed out making memories. No picture-perfect moments in the earliest years of their child's life because these parents were investigated by social services about concerns which were unfounded. It's awful to not be able to comfort them, miss their birthday and miss holidays. Katie's one of them. We've changed her name because she's worried what could happen from speaking to us. Her baby daughter was injured in a fall. She was cleared, but the investigation took its toll. Going through that process was absolutely horrendous. Like, absolutely horrendous because you don't really eat, you don't really sleep, like, ever, because you're constantly thinking about what is actually going to happen next. Nobody, like, I, nobody said to me that they weren't going to take my children off me. And it was horrific. Like, I became anorexic and everything. I had loads and loads of mental health problems at the time in that as well because I became really depressed. Do you still bear the scars of all that now? Absolutely. Like, that is something that I will never, ever forget. So you don't get the chance, like, to be sitting, like, cuddling them, reading stories and all that because you're busy trying to turn yourself into a lawyer, a doctor, constantly reading over and over legislation on any book that you can find to try to make things better. Figures by the University of Central Lancashire shared exclusively with Five News show one in four children in Scotland were referred to social services before their fifth birthday. That's almost 14,000 children where concerns were raised about their welfare. Of all children in Scotland, one in 17 went on to be investigated for suspected abuse. A co-author of a report on these numbers believes some referrals are happening because high-profile child protection failures mean agencies are anxious they'll be blamed if they miss something. If you are um, investigating more and more and more children and you have fewer and fewer resources to do that, then it is possible that some serious harm is, is not noticed just because of the volume of activity that's having to be carried out. The best people to keep children safe are their families. And I think the important thing that we should be working on is to strengthen families and support families and enable parents to do the best job they possibly can. Social workers like Jude accept even being referred can be intimidating for families and that the pressures facing the profession make it harder to do the job. We've got a crisis of recruitment and retention, we've got higher caseloads um, than we would like to see. It just really hampers our capacity to build the relationships that we came into these roles to, to have. It's important not to stigmatise what we do so families are, aren't more afraid of us, I think. Um, often when tragedies happen, we are uh, often, you know, criticised for not investigating enough. I think when reports like this come out, there is a risk that we are seen to investigate too much. So I think it's about balance. The Scottish Government says every child deserves to be loved and protected from harm and has provided funding to transform how family support is delivered, investing at least £500 million in early intervention and prevention to support families before they reach crisis point. Hi, Talia. Talia was wrongly suspected of causing her two-year-old daughter's illness. She was taken into foster care, but they were reunited a year later when the case was dropped. How did I go from one moment in my life being considered a, a good and caring mother to having my child removed and at least I felt like I was being accused of being a monster? It's terrifying to realise that a system can be full of so many people who are desperate to do a good job, who really care but are as, almost as powerless as we were. In Scotland, a commitment's been made called The Promise, which wants a shift in how decisions are made about children. But there are fears the system isn't working. Unnecessary referrals made in fear of missing something. Social workers with a duty to investigate and families left to pick up the pieces. Alan Jenkins, 5 News.